Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, I am very, very excited to tell you that I was right. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not really excited that I was right. I am excited because it has been confirmed that character rares are going to be in Dark Phantasma. I, of course, made this prediction a couple of times in a bunch of different videos, mostly because it seemed sensible and partly because I really, really wanted it to happen. And now it has happened and I am delighted. Of course, do remember that Dark Phantasma, other than the character rares, had been following the exact same trajectory as a set, by which I mean it has V-Maxes, but doesn't have V-Stars. It brings in Radiant Pokemon, etc. So it just seems too perfect to not have the character rares because if it didn't have the character rares that would be one weird difference between these two sets it didn't make much sense and now it has been confirmed that they are here and i for one am absolutely delighted now we've seen three character rares one character super rare that is exactly half of what we are expecting we are expecting six character rares and two character super rares that makes sense and we'll know at the end of this week when the set reveals and all the secret rares are revealed in Japan, etc. And do remember that when everything is revealed, I will be here to show you. That's kind of what I do. And I'll be honest with you, right? These look absolutely stunning. And I am absolutely delighted. This does mean that it is exactly parallel with what we saw from Battle Region at this point. It is the same kind of set. Radiant Pokemon, character rares, etc. So, I feel pretty confident that, you know, when we see Incandescent Arcana, that is the next A set coming around, I would expect exactly the same. Six character rares, two character super rares, three radiant Pokemon. That makes perfect sense to me. So, with all of that born in mind, let's take a look at the ones that were revealed. Starting with, I mean, we've got to start with Pikachu, haven't we? Pikachu's getting a character rare, and it is awesome. Now, Pikachu actually comes in here with Akari, and that character might look a little bit familiar, because of course, Akari is the female protagonist, a female player character in Legends Arceus. And we'll talk about it more in a moment, but just for comparison's sake, Arcanine does come in with Rei, who is of course, the male player character from Legends Arceus, which I don't think is a coincidence. They've gone and given us the pair, and I for one am rather delighted indeed. These are extremely cool, and I, I just can't say enough good stuff about them. This is just absolutely wonderful. Now, as for the Pikachu, the artwork's brilliant. Furusawa here doing excellent work. Remember that Pikachu? We did see it before. Now, it's weird, because this Pikachu, I think, has some of the best Pikachu artwork. I mean, the regular art that we've ever seen. I think the regular Pikachu here is absolutely stunning. Kuramitsu doing a wonderful job. And it's got an ability that gives it free retreat if it's got any energy attached to it. So, you're going to have to choose between them. Obviously, we're building up into the Raichu from the set. But yeah, this is very, very cool, ladies and gentlemen. And I love it. Although, in terms of playability, it is actually my least favorite of the three of them. Because there are three cards that I adore from dark phantasma three cards that i think are absolutely stunning that i'm really excited to build decks with and we've not seen a hasuian basque legion character rare although the fact that it is a good card the fact that it is a new pokemon from legends arceus these are reasons why it should be near the top of the list to get a character rare not confirmed but it really wouldn't surprise me but we have had it confirmed that Arcanine is coming. Now, firstly, we've got this lovely Uribe artwork featuring your male protagonist. It's lovely and all of that. Although, again, the regular artwork here is by Kato. And Kato's got two very distinctive styles when it comes to drawing Pokemon. You've got what I like to refer to as the liney drawing, like we see on the Bidoof that everybody plays, because it's a good Bidoof. And then there's the more rounded style. Look, I can't describe art, okay? that we see on stuff like Hasui and Arcanine. And I'm not such a fan of the line, although I do think it's cool, but his rounded style is absolutely like catnip to me. I adore it. So again, there's a very difficult decision to be made here. 
But this is the card that if you've got zero cards in hand, if you've got a completely empty hand, you deal 160 damage for zero energy. Which is essentially exactly what we saw on the old Granbull. Now, to be fair, it's not exactly the same. Granbull was 30 plus 130 with an empty hand. This is 10 plus 150. But you only ever want to use it with an empty hand. It's 160. It's fine. Plus, this is zero energy rather than one energy and is a way better type because fighting is awesome at the moment. I love fighting Pokemon in the TCG. I played a ridiculous amount of Granbull. This is awesome. And now we've got a character rare to back it up. And I, for one, am absolutely delighted. This one looks ridiculous. And I'm going to be playing a boatload of this deck. So I should probably pick up a playset of them. But then we've got the Spiritomb. And this Spiritomb, even when put next to the wonderful artwork of the others, might be the best of the three. It is absolutely crazy, over-the-top stunning. It's just all of this artwork is phenomenal. And the reason I get so excited about character rares coming back is because it basically means, hey, there's going to be eight character rares, or really, I suppose, six character rares and two character super rares. That means that there's going to be eight wonderful, amazing, beautiful pieces of artwork which are going to be coming to the TCG in the next set. And this is just absolutely wonderful. Now, Spiritomb actually appears on the card with Vessa, and I'm not going to tell you who Vessa is. Now, it's obviously something to do with Legends Arceus. You can tell by the clothes of Vessa there. You can tell by the building, which is clearly from Jubilee Village. And if you've played the game, this will look very familiar. If you've not played the game, I don't want to tell you who Vessa is, because it is a little bit of a spoiler for the game. So basically, you either know who she is, because you played the game and you're like, that's awesome, what a cool reference. Or you've not played the game... In which case, go play the game. It's amazing. And then when you do a particular task, which you will do, don't worry. It's not one you can really miss. You'll find out who Vesta is and you'll go back to the card and be like, wow, that's pretty cool. And the Spiritomb is another one that I absolutely adore. They genuinely have taken two of the three cards I love from this set and given them character rares. I am desperately hoping for Hasui and Basque Legion. And what we've got for Spiritomb is an ability that when it's knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack, you search for any one card and put it in your hand, which is good. However, and it, it's not necessarily a reason to play the card, because if you're just relying on that, your opponent can gust around it, KO bench Pokemon, try and avoid giving you access to that ability, it can get super annoying. But you've got a really good attack here as well. For two Darkness Energy, and bearing in mind Dark Patch has been reprinted, or it has in Japan, it will have been by the time we get this, you deal 10 damage plus 60 more Freed Spiritomb in your discard pile. To put it simply, if you've got Freed Spiritomb in your discard, you, all you need to do is attach a Choice Band, and you're hitting 220, which is the magic number to KO Pokemon V. That is the number. So basically here... For two energy, and it's really easy to get the second one on there, you can be one-hit KOing Pokemon V, and either your opponent ignores you and you keep one-hit KOing Pokemon V, or they KO you, and then you get to search any one card coming into your turn. Like, whichever way you slice that, that's a win. I am a huge, huge fan of this card. And then we've been shown one character super rare, and at this stage it probably shouldn't surprise you, that it is an amorous. Of course it's an amorous. Why would it not be? Of course, that is the legendary Pokemon that was introduced in Legends Arceus. I still find it weird that an amorous didn't get its own set. It got put into the Hisuian Zoroark set. But the fact of the matter is, when they're doing character rares, I mean, come on. Kind of had to be. Uh, for what it's worth, the leading candidate for the other character super rare is not Hisuian Zoroark. And the reason is really simple. Again, if we assume they're copying Battle Region, and I think by now I've shown you they're copying Battle Region. Well, in Battle Region, the two character super rares were Garchomp V and Starmie V, who did not have V stars in the set. If we assume they follow through with that, i.e. they don't give a character super rare to V stars, which they didn't last time, and they don't give them to Vs that evolve into V star, which they didn't last time, that means that the next character super rare is going to be either Gallade or it's going to be Hasuian Electrode. And come on. We're very much in the sets at the moment, which are Legends Arceus focused. I can't tell you for absolute certain, 
But at this stage, I would be very, very surprised if the second character Super Rare was not Hasui and Electrode V. I can't tell you for absolute certain it's going to be. But it pretty much seems like it's going to be that or Gallade. And I think there's an obvious choice here. Now, as for Enamorous and what it actually does, it's, it's quite a nice card, honestly. What we've got is an ability that says as long as it's active, you prevent all effects of your opponent's abilities done to any of your Pokemon with Psychic Energy attached, which is useful. And an attack for free energy that does 100 damage and attaches too basic for me to discard to your Pokemon in any way you like. But the fact of the matter is we've got free energy here and that's too much. Because this is a setup Pokemon and I fear that's just going to be too expensive. But the fact that these character rares are back is awesome. Like I say, we've got three left to be shown off. I believe they could change. I just don't think they will. And that would be two character rares, one character super rare. And the character super rare basically has to be Gallade or Electrode. And I'm guessing Electrode. None of this is confirmed. I am just taking what we learned from Battle Region. And assuming it's going to be the same. Because so far in this set, everything has been. But now it's over to you guys. Tell me what you think about these. Tell me which is your favorite. Tell me anything you want to tell me. Let me know in the comment section. Good us. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Wasi And Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv. Slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel. Get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff. Head on over to patreon.com. Slash PTCG Radio. Where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing as always. Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.